uh, why the thread pool executor is important because the custom thread factory and the thread pool executor are going to play hand in hand while we solve that particular problem statement. The work with executors before you might have seen whenever you use thread pools, you see something like pool one, thread one, pool one, thread zero, pool one, thread two. But now because you have used a thread factory and we have set our custom name to it. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Code with Ease by Varsha. So we have been doing a playlist on threads coding questions. So these are the questions which we have already covered. Questions or maybe the topics. So these were like the topics which were introduced in the form of problem statement or coding questions that we have discussed. Today we will talk about one of the design patterns, very important design patterns in the world of concurrent programming. And that requires a basis or like a foundation of the factory design pattern. So we'll touch upon that. And we'll start with the first, uh, so first we'll start with the question, the problem statement that we have. And we'll touch upon the factory design pattern and then we will see what are the related concepts we need to understand to solve that question. And of course, at the end, we will see the code also. So let's begin. So let's see what is the problem statement for us. Custom thread factory and thread pool executor we will use. So we have been tasked to design a system so that we can efficiently manage the execution of tasks using a thread pool. Again, thread pool, if you are not aware of thread pool, again, refer to this threads coding playlist that we have in which you have covered from scratch everything about uh, you need to know about the thread pool. So what we will do using the thread pool, you have to demonstrate the use of a custom thread factory to create the threads with certain specific properties and the configuration of a thread pool executor. So basically, the code that we need to write has to showcase the implementation of a custom thread factory. And we are going to use the thread pool executor to, of course, to manage the threads. And the custom thread factory is going to be liable to be able to control the thread creation with certain specific properties. This is the question that we have. So now let's go over back to uh, the factory design pattern where we want to touch upon that first. And then we will continue with the thread factory. So let's talk about the background of factory design pattern. It belongs to creational pattern. Uh, there are three types broadly of design pattern as per gang of four's uh, pattern, creational, structural and uh, behavior. So factory design pattern, builder design pattern are part of the creational patterns. So it helps us in creating the objects more flexibly. Now, why does it do that? Okay. The reason being factory design pattern helps to centralize the object creation. So what happens is earlier, uh, whenever you have a client code and you don't want to expose that this particular OBJ1 and OBJ2 belongs to which, which particular class, you don't want to directly instantiate the objects which is needed in the client code. So if you do that, it leads to tight coupling, which is again difficult to test, maintain, extend. So because of that, we have tried to introduce this design pattern, which helps to centralize the creation. So there is going to be one factory, like literally a factory, which helps in the manufacturing of objects. So this factory class will be literally the place where it is actually going to manufacture the objects and give it to me. I as a client do not have to know where is my object? How is it getting created? I don't have to know all of that. I just know I need this object. I'll ask the factory, hey, give me this object. So it is going to give it to me. As a result of that, this leads to loose coupling. The responsibility of usage of an object and creation of an object, there's a separation of concern. And this leads to more modular and maintainable code, of course, because you have more loose coupling, there is an abstraction. The factory class is doing an abstraction over the creation of the actual object. And coming to the thread factory. So this is where we now want to introduce the thread factory. Now, this particular interface, which is defined in the java.util.concurrent package is based on this particular factory design pattern. And this helps to create the threads in a more controlled manner. So then hence the name thread factory. It is the factory where the threads are being manufactured. As simple as that. thread factory, not thread factory. But it's a factory of threads. So you can think of it like this. Okay. Moving on. Now, what are the ways to create a thread? So we'll revisit a little bit. Uh, we know that we can create, uh, we can extend this particular thread class, override the run method, and we can give our logic, and then we can use this one way. We also know another way of implementing the runnable interface, where we again override the run method, and uh, the class will implement this interface, and we are done. Hence, introducing the third way of using the thread factory interface. So, creating of thread, so far we have mostly used uh, implementing the runnable interface, but now, we also know there is another way of using, uh, creating a thread, which is using the thread factory interface. Now we know interface we cannot use. We have to create a concrete class of that. So the class is to implement the particular interface. Interface will have its own abstract method that we have to override. What is the abstract method in this case? In this case, the abstract method is called new thread, which we have to override. 
while we are overriding what are we essentially doing we are creating the thread we are configuring a new thread when i say configure there are three things which you can do you can set a custom name of your thread you can set the name of your name like if you want to give your custom name to a thread you can do that you can set a priority we know that high priority low priority not high and low it's max and min priority you can set you can set so we can set the name custom name a priority and finally we can also set a daemon status like a thread which is running in background we can set that to true or not so these are the different customizations which we can do inside this new thread method in case of overriding the custom thread factories uh, i mean of course in case of implementing the thread factory interface and trying to override this particular method so now what do we learn about the custom thread factory so if we have to create a class a concrete class which implements this thread factory interface then this custom thread factory class that we get out of it it helps us in a way to control the and customize the creation of the threads and we know that this is the interface it implements we are going to override the new thread method and we are able to set the attributes for the thread names priority daemon status all of this which will come in handy when we try to use thread pools uh, where just to give a small brief like thread pools it will be like a pool of threads which will be dedicated towards doing some certain uh, some work and for that set of threads when we want to customize these attributes it is going to be helpful in that case we will see that we'll come to uh, solving that problem statement also and why do we need this uh, thread factory interface in simple words we have been able to do the customization and most importantly in decoupling the object creation and the object usage now introducing the thread pool executor so what is it doing it is a sub interface of the executor interface uh, this is useful for efficient thread management again i have covered in detail about thread pools in one of the video as part of that playlist of thread coding question so you can go through that because this is an overview it is going to be talking about things in like very brief so what does it do it maintains a pool of worker threads like i said dedicated towards doing some tasks and this reduces the overhead of thread creation so the reason why we use thread pool the main reason is we don't have to manually create hundreds of threads if i need hundreds of thread to do a bunch of task i don't have to manually do it i will uh, create a thread pool and from that pool from that bunch of uh, worker threads it is going to shuffle and uh, reuse the threads and uh, some threads might be idle some threads might be working so basically we do the reuse of thread from the thread pool that we have so that is why the name is called thread pool because there's a pool of worker threads which are going to be used for various purpose and then they will be back put it back into the thread pool if it is not being used and um, there are also different methods for monitoring controlling submission of the task we don't have to manually submit uh, the task like like we don't have to say that hey now start the thread we just have to submit that hey uh, i want 100 uh, threads for this particular task and thread pool executor is going to take care of it and these are just uh, technical stuff and then these are just technical stuff that it can accept runnable type of task callable task and allows the configuration of pool size and max number of threads so uh, why the thread pool executor is important because the custom thread factory and the thread pool executor are going to play hand in hand while we solve that particular problem statement that we are being tasked to so they are going to be complementing each other so we have to understand the parameters of the thread pool executors constructors so that we can also understand where will the custom thread factory class actually fit in so now let's take a look at that like i mentioned the parameters of the constructor so these are the main parameters uh, i'll take you to the ide and where we will actually see the constructor and the parameter so these are different uh, values and what is the meaning of each of those so let's go to the ide and see pool executor class we see there's a java doc for this so this is the actual executor which we are going to use and over here uh, there are a couple of different uh, constructors that we see now over here you see thread factory is being taken as one of the parameter where we can actually supply as a parameter our custom thread factory but there is also another constructor which doesn't take a thread factory in that case what is being called is the default thread factory in the previous implementations where we have not specified a thread factory we have supposedly called this particular constructor where the default thread factory is being called default thread factory as in not our thread factory not our implementation not our customization right so if we take a look at each of these parameters the core pool size is the number of threads which we can keep like at least how many number of threads should be there in the pool max pool size is intuitive we can understand uh, keep a lifetime is how where if the threads are greater than the core pool size 
how much maximum time the idle threads the threads which are idle will have to wait uh, for the new task before they terminate and uh, time unit of course milliseconds seconds whatever your unit is going to be the work queue is going to be it is a, a type of a blocking queue which can take uh, i mean which can hold the tasks and finally we have the thread factory so these are all the parameters which we wanted to cover now let's take a look at the code so this is the custom thread factory demo code that we will see now so what we have done is something very simple we have created a custom thread factory class and uh, this is the class which we have created very simple we have overridden this particular new thread we have just given the different name to it we can do anything that we please do we can do something like uh, thread dot set like i said you can set the name you can set the daemon status you can set the priority these are the different things which you can do with this thread now coming to the thread pool executed so like we said this is the constructor wherein we have given the core pool size the max pool size the keep alive time this is the time unit in seconds we have used a blocking queue and we have used this particular thread factory over here so now instead of using the default thread factory we are using our own custom thread factory as our problem statement was what was our uh, problem statement this is what our problem statement was where we have to demonstrate where we had to demonstrate the use of a custom thread factory and that is what we have done here with the specific properties and we have used a thread pool executor after that it is the same drill we have used 10 threads and used as executor to submit the task and we have shut down the executor let's try to run this and see what happens okay so we can see that now the name has changed to my custom thread pool if you have worked with executors before you might have seen whenever you use thread pools you see something like pool 1 thread 1 pool 1 thread 0 pool 1 thread 2 but now because you have used a thread factory and we have set our custom name to it we are seeing these are the different names of the thread which are coming from the same thread pool that we have executed to give you an idea if it was not a custom thread factory so like i said there is a constructor which uses the default thread factory So what if we use that, and we will able to see that pool one thread zero, pool one thread two. That name, those names will be coming. So these are the names so because we are printing thread dot current thread dot get name. So if you don't use your custom thread factory implementation, this is what you are usually see. This is what the case has been when we did the previous programs because we used the constructor without our thread factory. Now we have used the constructor with our custom thread factory, and hence the difference. so yeah that is what we wanted to talk about we have discussed about custom thread factory in detail along with the thread pool executor this time so i am hoping you guys have got some value out of it you will be able to do the distinction between different types of constructor now that we have uh, discussed on this video and why thread factory plays a role where it plays a role how it plays a role and uh, what is the significance of this and all of that so hope you guys have liked the video and if you have please don't forget to like and share and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already that would really mean a lot to us and that would motivate us to bring more in depth concept videos like this thank you so much